Hello and welcome to the Village Chapel on this Wednesday in Holy Week. I hope all of you are staying healthy and safe. Let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 13, verses 21 through 32. At supper with his friends, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread, which I have dipped in the dish. So When he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel text is the story of the betrayal of Jesus by Judas. It reminds me of a story I once heard that there was once an Irish priest who was in the Church of England and had a church in London. And for some reason, he really didn't like the English. He was Irish, but he was there to serve them. And unfortunately, whenever he had a chance, he would say something derogatory in his sermons about the English. And since all of his congregation were English, they eventually got tired of this, and they complained to the bishop. The bishop said, I'll look into it. And so one Sunday, he showed up incognito and sat in the back row of the church and listened to the sermon in which, as usual, the Irish priest said something that was negative about the English people. After the service, he went back into the sacristy while the priest was disrobing. And he said, do you know who I am? I'm your bishop, and I'm telling you right now, this is going to stop. You're supposed to be serving these people. And how can you do that when you criticize them this way? You shouldn't be doing it as a priest. And the Irishman said, I understand, you're the bishop, I'm not. And the bishop said, well, Uh, Let that be an end to it. Well, he stayed around for the next service, and the Irish priest didn't know he would be there again. And so at the next service, he was preaching on John 13 and the betrayal of Jesus by Judas. And so he said, And on that evening of his arrest, 
Jesus said to the disciples, tonight one of you will betray me. And Peter said, Lord, is it I? And John said, Lord, is it I? And Judas said, I say, old man, do you think it could be me? We don't talk very much about Judas, but when we do, we don't ordinarily think of him sympathetically. His name is synonymous with treachery. In Dante's Inferno, Judas is in the lowest level of hell, eternally being devoured by Satan. In John's Gospel and in the book of Acts, we see absolutely no sympathy for the characters of Judas or Satan. In Matthew, we're told that Judas hanged himself, and in Acts, that his body fell to the ground and his bowels spilled out on the ground, very much like the way the death of Herod the Great is described. And if you'll recall, he was the king who tried to kill the baby Jesus in the slaughter of those little boys in Bethlehem. Two things that I'd like you to think about concerning Judas. First, I've always wondered why the Sanhedrin bothered using him. The Sanhedrin was the legislature, the Supreme Court, and the executive branch of the Jewish government. They could have arrested Jesus any time, tried him or not, and executed him. So why involve an inside player like Judas? Well, I think the answer is that because they didn't need, they didn't want to uh, arrest Jesus in the daylight in front of people. They needed to arrest him at night in a secluded place to avoid public outrage. Because of the popularity that Jesus had among the people. I mean, after all, they had just witnessed Palm Sunday. And if they arrested and executed him, like any common criminal, people might riot, and the Romans would hold the Sanhedrin responsible. Thus, they needed someone who could locate and identify Jesus at night and out of the public eye. Consequently, they needed Jesus, and he was arrested, tried, and convicted at night, contrary to their own Jewish laws. Next, I have a problem with the idea that we are just pawns of fate or victims of circumstances. It's a modern heresy, I believe, that has nothing to do with the good news of Jesus Christ. For example, I have been abusive to my family because I myself was abused as a child. I wasn't loved, so I can't love. The devil made me do it. In other words, it's not my fault. And the bottom line is, I'm not responsible for my own actions. Let's get this straight. Christianity is not a religion of fatalism. It's just the opposite. We have free will, and it can be a gift or a curse. How often do we as Christians want to shift the responsibility for our own sins or shortcomings to someone else? But Jesus says, I died on the cross so that you don't have to have an excuse anymore. Your sins and the sins of others are forgiven. So isn't it time to start acting like the child of God that you were always meant to be? Isn't it time, as now, with this virus that is plaguing us, not to blame others and engage in petty political disputes, 
but to be praying for each other and to the only Savior we have, who is Jesus Christ. Thank you.